Hi, welcome to another episode of In Range. I've got a very special episode for you today. We've got a special guest, Blake, and we're going to talk about um, the firearms community in terms of training, education, the new kind of people or some of the new people that are coming to this sport, as well as the consideration for self-defense. And Blake, you're kind of on, I'm going to say the tip of the spear in some ways about bringing some of that kind of education and instruction and advocacy to this. Um, I hate to use the word new because it's not new, but growing part of the firearms community. So Blake, maybe you could tell us a little more. Yeah. So my name is Blake Alvarenga. Um, I founded the Ford Initiative. You can go check us out. Um, it's just about putting out firearm education classrooms. So I'm part of this like growing class of liberal firearm instructors who are getting out into their communities and keeping an open door in a big tent and allowing everyone to have accessible firearm education. Um, especially what I do is I just put on free classes every single month. Um, and I specifically advertise to, you know, a diverse audience, um, everything from the liberal feminist bookstore to the co-op, you know, um, in, in non-traditional firearm spanner spaces. Um, because we know, like, statistically across every single demographic, whether it's liberal or conservative, young, old, um, everyone is buying more guns than they had before right? There are more gun owners of different types today than there was yesterday and over last year or a decade ago across every demographic. Even demographics that may want to ban guns or change gun laws in a way that makes them more restrictive, they're still buying guns as well, even if they're voting for politicians or asking for legislation that would reduce gun rights or make it more restrictive. So on. Yeah, no, that's a counterintuitive thing, and that's one of the things we have to address um, in terms of just the general movement forward, I am I'm a pretty staunch advocate for firearms rights and not really interested in reducing them. But I understand that there's also people in the community that have different opinions on that. But what we do know is that in this country, um, it, we are awash in firearms, right? It is part of the culture of America, of the United States. And that's not going to change anytime soon. And in fact, as you just said, it's actually not changing. It's growing. And so in that regard, uh, the worst kind of firearms owner, regardless of their political ideology, is one that doesn't know how to use the piece of equipment that they purchased. I mean, these are weapons. They are dangerous. They can be used for recreation. They can be used for self-defense. But having something like that without having the knowledge on how to use it properly is the most dangerous situation of all. And in that regard, regardless of what person someone's ideology is, uh, helping people be safe with these things, regardless of if they're a gun owner or not, in a country that's so filled with firearms is a very important thing. And it's something I think we miss and are lacking in our general education and culture, even whether it's firearms culture or just American culture. It's almost like there should be, in my opinion, there should almost be like you learn how to drive, you learn how to be safer on guns because you're eventually going to run into one in this country. Yeah. One of my personal goals and, you know, as long as we have firearms in America, I want to see a firearm classroom available in every community, right? Maybe necessarily, you know, communities decide they want to ban guns culturally, you know, they're statistically, um, they have no farms. Great. Don't need education. Every other community needs a classroom, right? Um, started in Madison with a lot of support um, from people in the community, people outside of the community who just want to see farm education in America, right? Um, we need that education because right now, right, if, especially if you're a liberal, um, left-leaning, uh, you are part of the LGBTQ community, maybe your BPIOC who don't feel comfortable in traditionally, you know, white spaces in America, there, there's not that classroom for you, right? There's not that instructor for you, right? Um, a, as a student or potential, you know, student for firearm education, you may search around, right? One, probably you're not going to find anything if you live in a metro area, or two, if you do find something, it's going to be that very, you know, right-wing slanted, exclusive, not inclusive environment towards, you know, tactical or, you know, nationalistic jingoism type culture, right? Versus like, hey, this is education. Come in, you bought a firearm, you know, you own a firearm. That's great. Let's teach you how to use it. Let's teach you how to be safe, responsible, how to practice. Um, the classes we do have, a lot of it leans toward lifestyle, right? Versus you own a firearm, usually not as a lifestyle. It's, you know, not plan A or B or C or D, you know, it's the bottom of the list, but God forbid you have to use it. You should know how to use it. 
You know, that's a good point when you use the term lifestyle, because for a lot of us, especially people that are like at my brutality matches or myself, uh, obviously, like a, such a significant part of my life um, is around firearms. Like, well, of course, I'm a content creator, but like um, I shoot all the time and it's my recreation. It's a sport. It's a martial art. It's um, it's a business like all those things like that's my lifestyle. But for many people, especially a lot of the ones now um, that are maybe feeling uh we don't have to get into whether it's justified or not really but feeling the need perhaps or in many instances we can see historically is truly a demonstrable need for self-defense or the ability to be capable of self-defense um this isn't a lifestyle for them they're not going out and buying like every gun there ever was they're not necessarily buying an 1860 army they're probably going to a store that may or may not give them good advice they may or may not walk away with a good purchase and at that point they have that thing and they've got to find training or hopefully find training and do it in a way that they're not going to feel like they are unwelcome because if you don't feel welcome you're not going to do it right and you're not going to practice if you don't like it so that's one of the challenges i've had as people ask me at in range all the time is can you recommend and i'm like this is harder. This is a harder question to answer than it should be. But you yourself and um, I've come to find out I, I didn't even know this directly, to be honest, like the Liberal Gun Club has a, a directory of resources, at least in a lot of states, not all states. So in that regard, can you give a recommendation to the audience about how to find resources like you or, or you in terms of if they need to find that kind of help, not only for themselves or maybe their friends that are looking to at least become competent? Yeah, so two biggest resources I could point out to people, um, the Liberal Gun Club, they've got an instructor directory, feel free to shoot them an email, it's a big tent organization, um, bringing in more instructors every day, better material, um, we're really trying to reach everyone. Um, there's also Operation Blazing Sword, um, if you're, you know, in a pinch and you just need someone to take you out to the range, you know, this weekend or next weekend because you feel targeted or threatened or you have a sudden need, Reach out to Operation Blazing Sword. Uh, they have over a thousand instructors in America, all over across the country. You can just reach out to one and be like, "Hey, can you take me to the range? Can you teach me how to use a gun?" Um, Liberal Gun Club, you know, is an organization. There are chapters, um, and then there are other, you know, inclusive organizations out there as well um, that people might be aware of. You can reach out to your local groups. They might be able to take you out um, because that's kind of how it's structured in America around like that basic firearm education. Really, there's hunter safety and concealed carry education, which one is aimed at hunting. The other one's usually more about laws and the ethics of using a firearm and when you should use a firearm, not necessarily um, all the things you need to know to pull the trigger, right? Um, or be safe while carrying all that before that. And then it's like you, you jump up a couple rungs and now you're learning how to you know, kick in doors and shoot around barriers. And it's just that that basic driver's ed level education is kind of missing in America. Um, the Liberal Gun Club's doing a really good job about that. Operation Blazing Sword's doing a really good job about that. Um, and there are other organizations out there working toward it. You know, it's funny when you say that, because I think back, I mean, I've, I've been doing the gun thing for a long, long time. And uh, I remember at least when the perception was, uh, the NRA used to be a place that was originally the NRA was founded to be a firearms training organization. In fact, it was founded post civil war because the, uh, the accuracy uh, capabilities of the union soldiers was so appalling that they're like, we need to do something about this. And that's what it was originally meant to be. And I think people of all political ideology that are interested in guns at this point are pretty disappointed in that organization for many reasons. Um, but one of the things that their fall from grace has included is some of the things they used to provide was uh, training and some sort of instruction. And while some of that's sort of loosely out there, the truth is there's a giant hole now in the world that was only kind of filled by them for a long time. And so it's time to fill that with better, more inclusive and um, more um, welcoming organizations that they, they, have, they sadly have not be, continued to be. Does that make sense when I say that? I mean, in terms of seeing yeah, that, absolutely. do you think that you see the hole for the same reason? Yep. I, I think that's what it is because my personal story with this is, you know, during the pandemic and the civil unrest, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in Wisconsin next door to Minnesota. Um, people reached out to me. They're like, Hey, I, I bought a gun last weekend. Where do I go get training? I'm like, well, let me look around. And I'm like, ah, oh, this class is, you know, hour drive, two hour drive, three hour drive. And, you know, the instructor, you know, Instructors kind of wear their personality on their sleeves, you know, sure. you got my, I got my bag of instruction goodies in the rainbow bag, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, innocent, 
in this, right? I, I give off a certain vibe and that can turn students off. And then if students don't have an educator that looks viable to them, they just don't get educated, right? Maybe they have a friend or a cousin or a coworker that'll take them up to the range, but that's putting a lot of pressure on that like local bond, right? You, you have that friend or cousin or, you know, parent that can take you out. Well, you know, do they have a background in instruction? Have they ever taught any kind of skills? Like what's, who educated them, right? That's a lot of pressure to put on people, right? We need some kind of system, whether it's through the Ford Initiative or the Liberal Gun Club. We, we just need to put up more classrooms. We need to put up rails. We need to give people structured education so they can get those basics in anywhere, right? Um, and you would think that like through YouTube and all that, we would have all the information out there. And it is, and it's disparate. And you could put people through a series of videos, but we've kind of seen through the pandemic that people learn better in person, right? They learn better yeah. with hands-on. Right. We've seen the generation of students that had to sit two years over Zoom calls. Like even with the instructor being live, it's extremely difficult people for people to learn remotely. Right. We need to set up local classes that understand, you know, the local population can teach those skills and teach them competently. And, you know, I, I think we're seeing a new generation of that is filling that NRA gap. As and as we're seeing um, like the next generation of firearms owners and advocates, they are coming from a much, generally a much larger diversity of, of communities than we've ever seen before. And what that might mean is that some of these communities that people come from are ones that have quite frankly been typically either um, uh, shunned guns or worse, they've been just against them, but things change, times change, and people in these communities are now surrounded by people that may not necessarily always agree with them as it moves forward. And so necessarily finding that resource amongst your own group may be harder than you'd think until these groups get larger. And we're seeing that happen. I'm not saying it's not the case. and It's happening exponentially. But just reaching out, it, it used to be, you know, you can reach out to a uh, you lived in a rural place and, you, and your uncle taught you how to do something or whatever, but that's not how that's working, especially for maybe urbanites or people of other communities that just don't have those types of resources. So that's where we got to find places to fill those gaps so that these new owners are not only capable and competent, but safe. Yeah. And I encourage, you know, anyone out there who's been like, you know, I wish people understood firearms better. Well, if you've got a little drive, you got a little motivation, you have some free time, Contact me, contact Liberal Gun Club, Operation Blazing Sword, figure out how you can assist in your community. Maybe you help a handful of people a uh, year. Maybe you start teaching classes. Maybe you become an instructor. You know, there, there's so much out there that you could do if you want to help people get educated. And when we talk about educating people, and I mean everyone, even people who may not like guns, right? I think there's some of the most important people to, to teach about them, like people who want to restrict firearm rights because um, they don't necessarily know what they're restricting, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you educate them, they can make informed decisions and they might make better informed decisions. Well, you're making the simple argument that I've always stood by that ignorance is never a good answer for any problem. The ignorance is never a solution. Whether someone has a different opinion than you or not, if they base it out of at least knowledge, they're basing it out of knowledge. Ignorance lets them base it out of the wild speculation, which is why we see the gun regulations we have now that frankly, frequently make no sense at all. They're just insanity. They're they're made by people that don't even know what they're talking about. The other thing is, as you bring people into the fold, or even someone that maybe would be hesitant to uh, even learn just from the perspective of being safe, I can say for my own personal life, I've known people that were maybe not anti, but they were reluctant. But when you take them out and it's an environment that's positive and you have them shooting the 22 for the first time, the end of the day, they might be shooting a, this actually happened. Someone I knew that was terrified of guns, we had them shooting a 22 in the morning and an M1 Garen in the afternoon because they were like, give me more, give me more. You must be seeing that in your circles too, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the only thing I would say is just put it out there. It's okay if you take someone out to the range, they shoot a 22, they set it down and it's not for them. You you are going to run into it, especially if you decide to get into this as you know um, a passion like I have, right? It, not everyone's going to take to farms and, and that's okay. We have to be okay with that as a society that some people pick up a gun, they try it. It's not for them, but for other people, yeah, absolutely. They're going to find a new hobby or passion or some, or new interest. So in this regard, being that, I mean, I know you said you have your, your bag behind you. That's the rainbow there, but like, so when you're doing your training, what have you seen 
uh, just to touch that when you, cause you've done a lot of training, you do a lot of training as I understand it, like regularly, what kind of, um, newer type of gun owners are you seeing coming to your classes or into your environment or like people that maybe you wouldn't even expect or people you do expect, but what are you seeing? Yeah. So getting into it, I, I expected a, a very narrow audience. Right. Um, and it's the, it's very flipped. So the expectation when I got into that, it was going to be about 80%, you know, young male, right. People ready to go out, get their guns on, get the concealed carry. Um, it's pretty flipped. They're, they're the minority of my classes. They make up about 20%. Um, I would say 80% of my classes are people of color. They're, they're women. Uh, it's the LGBTQIA community. Um, it, it's that diverse slice. And I, I think a lot of that just is there hasn't really been an educator. So I teach the only class in my city, the only free class I believe in my state. Um, I keep making that statement and no one corrects me. And everyone knows the fastest way to get corrected on the internet is to say the wrong thing. And since I've been saying it for about six months now, um, consistently, because I've been teaching for a little bit over a year. Um, oh, time flies. Um, yeah, there's just nothing out there and people need this education. So I'm in Madison, Wisconsin now, hoping to expand to Milwaukee as we bring up more instructors and then rest of the Midwest, rest of the country, who knows? It, it's, it's just a money problem. So we're gonna get out there, raise some funds, get education in the hands of hopefully every American community. Yep. I agree with that a hundred percent. Like I said, um, ignorance is never the answer and having a, uh, in this, in this society we live in, even just being competent and safe around firearms is a huge step forward. So I'm thankful that people like yourself are out there doing this. And I'm very thankful to see these communities that are growing. And it's very interesting to see the evolution of the modern American firearms owner really breaking up so many of the cliches, right? Um, the other thing that's so interesting to me, and then I'm going to let you have the last word um, and important to me is that when we see people that um, and we see this on the internet, and sadly, in range has seen a lot of it. People that uh, believe that they're advocates for human rights and for the Second Amendment, but they only are advocates for it for a certain group. Only their demographic is the one that they really believe in that for. And that's not, of course, inclusive. It's worse than inclusive. It's straight up authoritarian. So I'm going to drop my little bomb, and then I'm going to let you have your last statement. But um, if that's your approach to the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights. Uh, sorry, that's very un-American. And the reality is these are rights apply to all law-abiding citizens of this country. And it's important and pertinent to us as communities, whatever community you're in, to make sure the people around you feel safe, included, and competent when they decide to be firearms owners. So, Blake, I'm going to let you have the last word before we close the video off, but that's like my little bomb drop there. No, absolutely. I'm all for it. Um, yeah, two ways for everyone. Uh, I just want to put it out there. You know, when you talk to people, just try and give them information. Try Don't try and force your opinions on people. Let them know how firearms actually work. Offer to get them educated. Offer them resources. Offer to take them out to the range. But then don't pressure them. Um, we can change the culture, right, on this, especially on the education. Um, firearm education is firearm harm reduction, whether it's safe handling or mental health. You know, just talk to people and try and be even killed about it. Like, even if you're so passionate about 2A and I meet so many crusaders for the second amendment, like pump the brakes, right? And try and meet them where their opinions are currently and then just offer the information so they can take a different path, you know? Whether harm reduction is such an important, harm reduction is such an important part of, I think a lot of things we need in our society right now. We need a lot of harm reduction in a lot of places and this is definitely one of them. And so what I wanna say is thankful to you. I'm thankful to people yourself and people like you and for bringing this to the channel. And um, hopefully all of us can do our part in that harm reduction to make these communities safer for everyone, whether you're a gun owner or not. So uh, Blake, I want. how do people get a hold of you if they're interested or in your area? Sure. Um... They can find me at forwardinitiative.org. Uh, I have a listing at the Liberal Gun Club, um, and I also have a listing with Operation Blazing Sword. Um, all amazing organizations. Uh, Liberal Gun Club can turn you into an instructor. If you're motivated, they've got chapter meetups all over the country. Operation Blazing Sword is part of Pink Pistols. Uh, also check out your local Pink Pistols chapter. They're a great organization. I'm going to put those links in the description below. So if you need them, take a look below and click on them. And yep, hopefully you can... Um, connect up with people that can help you out. Or maybe if you're interested in being part of making uh, of, of, of harm reduction and making this a better community for all of us, you could also talk to them about that as well. Blake, thank you for being here today. Thank you for bringing this conversation to the table. Thank you for what you're doing. 
It's very important. I, I, I know that I know you know that, but I think it's important to hear that. It's we need this, and I appreciate all of y'all that are doing stuff like this. So thank you. The way is for everyone. It is. Thanks for watching, guys. Check this stuff out. Hopefully, we'll see you at the range.